Next, Mary Backstage, Noble Wife. The story of America's favorite family of the footlights and of their fight for security and happiness against the concrete heart of Broadway. Our story begins where we left it last time. In the dry Tortugas, Mary, Harry, Pop, and Calvin are setting out to find food and water since there's no telling how long they may be marooned. And on the beach, we hear... You know, uh, the first thing we learned when I was in the service is you got to find water. you got to make plants to survive. That's right. Well, there should be what some fresh water. What service were you in, anyway? Uh, yeah, I never heard you were in the service, uh, Calvin. Well, I, when I was a scout is what I mean. A boy uh, scout. When I was a boy scout. Oh, sure. You, they used to teach you to uh, live off the land. Oh, shit! Out of here. What oh. does that mean? They sting, too. They oh, take they a bite. stick right on you, that's yeah. for sure. Well, let's start doing something. We don't want to just stand here getting a suntan. What do you mean? Play tag or something? No. Let's go find water and see if there's any food. Maybe there's some other people here in the dry All right, let Somebody has to take charge here. Harry, why don't you tell us which way to go? Well, I'd say let's go north. <laughs> All of us? Well, yes, or we can... Well, wait a minute. Why don't I go one way... You go one way, you go one way, and you go one way. Yeah, that would be, uh, I think your idea of having each of us go in a, in a different well, direction would be good. Yeah. I could go to the north of the island, you to the south, Mary to the east, and Pop to the west. I'm going to go over and cut myself a green stick with a hook or a crook on it and try to walk around and see if it'll work down here, like a dousing or... Well, it, it might. I, I think you got to have a particular kind of wood. I think if you men had any, any, you, I, do you? What's the matter, Mary? Well, it's silly. I think I keep hearing merry-go-round music. <laughs> merry-go-round. <laughs> merry-go-round. The heat can get you that way, Mary. Boy, no doubt about that. Better get under a coconut tree there where there's a little relief from the heat. And uh, uh, no, I'm going to say another thing. That way. Go ahead, Calvin. What were we going to say? I was going to say, maybe we ought to build a boat, too, and make plans to get off this place. What? And, uh... Wait a minute. What? I don't uh, think we'll be here that long, Calvin. Uh, certainly there should be a fishing party along here before long. Wait, and... I want to talk to Mary. Yeah. Yeah. What? What's the matter? Well, do I look stupid or what? Well... Do well, I have to answer right away? Or? Reasonably so, yes. What's the matter, Calvin? You've got a strange look on your face. Well, I think... I think I hear merry-go-round music, too. Funny, I thought I did myself. How about you, Barry? Yes, I heard it, but I haven't heard it. Wait, I think I hear it now, too. Let's listen. No, no. Well, I guess it's just you three. Funny, you know, your mind can play real tricks on you when you get off in a forsaken place like this. Oh, yeah, oh yes, now I hear it. Oh, no. That's, that's only in our minds. Well, is the semi-tropical sun beginning to get to our friends? Do they hear a real carousel? Be sure and join us tomorrow when we may learn the answer as we hear Calvin say, Listen, I hear a carousel. That's tomorrow in the next exciting episode of Mary Backstage, Noble Wife. Word Car speaking. And before we go any further, audience, let's uh, take a look at today's rundown and see if there are some things here that uh, you're going to like. We're going to have uh, Flaming Bombadine, whom we've promised so often. Oh, you're He's kidding. He's going to be oh, here to geez. do an unusual circus act that uh, we oh. think you'll like. Boy, of all the shows to get tickets Going for. to be saluting uh, another Honor City, well, the first Honor, Honor City. City. That one out with the, uh, oh, the A bird. series of them, and we'll be beginning that today. Oh. Going to have uh, a commercial oh. audience. I see you smiling at that. Oh. And then we'll be uh, calling in Wally Ballou for a new feature Boy, from Idle Wild Airport. People to see this show. Look, will somebody get rid of that troublemaker? The, uh, the rest of the audience seems very hey, pleased watch, watch, with the roundup. Right out that way. Hey, come on. Watch it. Okay, fine. Mary Backstage, Noble Wife. The story of America's favorite family of the footlights and of their fight for security and happiness against the concrete heart of Broadway. 
Yesterday, our friends thought their ears were playing tricks on them when they all heard what sounded like a carousel. Now, as they all agree that the sound is real, we hear Mary say, Well, come on, let's see if we can track it down. I thought at first it was a figment of my imagination, but now that you've heard it, Calvin... Yeah, I've heard it. You've heard it too, Pa. Yep, I have. Harry, you've heard it. I have. I was the last to hear it, but I do now. I know that's a carousel. We know that's not a figment of anybody's imagination. That's a real live carousel with a calliope sound. But what would it be doing on one of these uh, barren islands of the dry Tortugas? Well, the only thing I could think of is maybe there's an amusement park around here that we don't know of. Yes, we don't know that these are all uninhabited. You know, there are, there are ten islands here that make up the group, and some have a bird station on them, others have a laboratory. But I find it hard to believe that Captain Wolf Larson would put us ashore on an island where there's an amusement park and everything like that. Maybe he just wanted us to have a little fun. Oh, you know oh, Captain Larson. Oh, come on, Bob. That's not Captain Larson. The one thing he doesn't want you to have is fun unless he gets hit in the head and has a personality change. Yeah, that's right. You never could count on that either. Well, but... it seems he was having a nice personality when he dropped us, so it could be that he picked a nice spot here where there's a, an amusement park. Oh, I think he had a change of personality, Mary, when he, when he set sail away from here. I think he was in a bad frame of mind. Oh, it's... So hard for me to recall anything. I wish I was back home at House of Toast, just standing back at the counter, buttering them on the far side or the near side, Boy, however they want. Doesn't them. that sound nostalgic? Just the name House of Toast brings back a flood of memories. What I wouldn't give now for one of those thick prune shakes. Oh, boy. Well, don't feel too bad, Calvin. We'll be back there sooner or later. I even agree. I think I'd like a prune shake right now. It sounds so good. Icy cold. And Nice piece of toast, butted on the far side. Well, come on, let's push through the brush here and head for the sound that yeah. maybe I'd, will lead uh, to people. What's that? It may lead to people when we get to the carousel. You just get thinking about the house of toast and how much fun it would be there. I wonder who's running it for us in our absence. Oh, somebody probably stepped Neil, in. Neil, I think. Yes, Neil might have taken over. I left over. a note saying that if we didn't show up for Neil to go over to house of toast... He seems like a good, trustworthy young man. Oh, Neil is the salt of the earth, of course. wonder where Harry Jr. is. Harry who? Harry Jr., our son. Oh, our son. I don't know. He's He has been missing for some time. Yeah. Hey, I think we're getting close to it. That really is a carousel. There's no doubt about it. Got to be. But what's it doing way out here in the dry tortugas? Getting closer. Just up this dune, and then, there. Uh... Hey! What is it, Calvin? It's a carousel! And so our friends at last do come to a carousel. They're on this deserted key, but is it deserted? Be sure and be here on Monday when we'll hear Calvin say... I think it's a mirage. That's Monday in the next exciting episode of Mary Backstage, Noble Wife. Word Carr speaking. Here's a valuable tip from the makers of Einbinder Flypaper. Friends, we all know that the income tax deadline is rapidly approaching. But did you realize that flypaper may be a deductible item on your return? Well, that's true. If your physician has prescribed flypaper to keep insects off your body or those of a dependent, then you can deduct the cost. And the same is true if you're self-employed and have to buy flypaper in order to conduct your business. So keep taxes down while you're keeping bugs away by buying and deducting genuine Einbinder flypaper, the brand you've gradually grown to trust over the course of three generations. <laughs> Mary Backstage, Noble Wife, the story of America's favorite family of the footlights and of their fight for security and happiness against the concrete heart of Broadway. It's moments after our last episode now in the dry Tortugas as Mary, Harry, Pop, and Calvin have tracked down the sound of the carousel. And as they stand at the top of the sand dune looking down, we hear Calvin say, Hey, you know what? What, Calvin? It's a carousel. You mean to say there is a real carousel? Let me look. At... Way out here in the middle of nowhere, a carousel. I don't understand this. You're right, it is, unless it's a mirage, but it looks pretty real. 
Certainly hey, you does. know, that could be a mirage. Well, there's Around only here. one way to find out, Calvin. Let's go to it. On these sand dunes. With this heat, this blazing sun. Isn't that a remarkable thing? Now, that had to be brought here by somebody. Oh, yeah. And set up. But why? There's no amusement park. There's no pavement. It's just stuck in the middle of a... Well, it'd be a sandy beach. Maybe we'll learn the answers to some of your questions a bit later, Barry, when we arrive at the carousel. Well, we're practically up to it now. Oh, sure. It's going around pretty rapidly, too. It has the horses that go up and down, and then it has the ones that don't do a thing and just sit there. I hate the ones that just sit there. Oh, I know. There's no action there at all. That's, That's awful. If it doesn't go up and down, I wouldn't want to ride on it. Hey, you know what I just noticed? There's nobody riding on it. Just going around empty. Well, I noticed that a long time ago. Oh, yes, we all noticed that, That's I'm sure. That's the first thing we noticed. Oh, really? That's one of the things you notice about a carousel. If there's anybody on it or not, that's the first thing that impresses you. Oh, of course. Oh, that's... yes, the first thing you look at the carousel, if there's nobody on it, you mentally make a note that there's nobody on that hey, carousel. Hey, you know something else I just noticed? There's nobody running the controls of it. Oh, we noticed that too, uh, Pop. Now, that is uh, truly amazing. Just running by itself. I wonder how long it's been going around like this. What kind of power do these things use, do you know, Calvin? Well, they usually have some kind of a generator out back, gasoline-powered engine that turns a belt, uh -huh. and then it turns the whole thing uh -huh. around. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Well, I don't see any sign of that either, do you? No, I well, don't. Well, there it stopped. Oh, there it goes again. Look at that. Anybody want to ride? Well, why does not? I mean, let's get on there and then worry about it later. Sure. I haven't ridden one of these things since I was a child. I think over, usually, to one side or in the center, there's always the uh, control where the man stops it and starts it. Right, that's right. But I don't see any sign of that. Here, oh, Mary. In the middle. Give me a hand. I'll help you, help you on. Uh, 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 oh, wow. You all right, uh, Calvin? Oh, you all right. Oh, that really smarts. Come on aboard. It's really great. And it's free. And so our friends climb aboard the carousel in the Tortugas. And you want to learn more of this mystery tomorrow when we'll hear Mary say, Here comes somebody now. That's tomorrow in the next exciting episode of Mary Backstage Noble Wife. Word Car speaking. Now here's Wally Ballou. Play Ballou here on Fifth Avenue with my broadcasting uh, partner, Artie Skirbehorn, about 10 blocks north. Here at 59th Street, uh, it's an exciting, albeit uh, rather chilly, corner, and we have seen some uh, wonderful marching bands combined. I think there's one right now uh, passing our vantage point. Let's go down and pick up some of that music. No, I guess it's just the drum part that maybe you can hear that. Artie, anything uh, happening at your vantage point? All right, so stand back. I'll be going on the air just a few moments. Artie, can people. you hear me? If you hear me... So if I uh, ask you a few questions, I'll speak cut, right up. Cut him off, engineer. So, he doesn't know he's on. This is Wally Ballou returning it to the... Next, Mary Backstage, Noble Wife. The story of America's favorite family of the footlights and of their fight for security and happiness against the concrete heart of Broadway. Today, our story takes place in the Manhattan office of Greg Marlowe, young playwright secretly in love with Mary, as he tells Harry Backstage Jr. and his friend Neil of his plans to locate Harry, Mary, Pop, and Calvin. And we hear Greg say... And uh, this is one of the finest uh, private eyes in North America, if not South America, if not the entire world. Ah, I know you go to a lot of expense to find my mother and father, Mr. Marlowe, and I really appreciate it. I watch these, uh, these private eyes on TV shows, and they get like... Oh, somebody at the door. They get like uh, $30, $40 a day sometimes. Oh, plus expenses, right. It's going to run into money for you, oh, Mr. Marlowe. It's, it's a little more than that now, if you've been watching the old shows on TV. I think your secretary's trying to reach you, uh, Mr. They get uh, up to $200 $250 a day now. You're, you're thinking probably way back to the $200 days of, uh, a day? Of that Ralph Bellamy show. Holy that's, Toledo, uh, that's a lot of money. That's when they used to get 20 and 30 but now, 
Now they get up to uh, $200 and $250 a day plus uh, expenses. Did you hear that, Neil? Wow. They get up to $200, $250 a day. Holy Toledo, that is something. I can't believe that, I, uh, that I'm studying a subject at school that will make me a doctorate. I won't begin to make anything like that. No, you'll have to be in practice for some time. Excuse me, Mr. Mallow. Somebody here to see you. Oh, uh, who would it be? His name, he gave me his card. He said you called him Al Holy Toledo, Private Eye. Oh, fine. Wow, the detective is here, Neil. Did you hear that? We're going to get to meet him. Holy Toledo, what a, what a terrific name. I can hardly wait to see him. Uh, send him in, will you please? Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry to bother you, Mr. Marlowe, but... The secretary outside said I could walk right in. Well, no uh, bother at all, uh, Mr. Toledo. Uh, I you're see here. you've got company, though. I'll wait outside no, if you no, don't mind, uh, sir. No, no, they're all part of the the problem. I guess I could put it that way. Oh, just this one is, thing. Uh, you, you don't mind this cigar, do you? No, no, not at all. Some people get very offended if I blow cigar smoke in their face. Well, I don't want you to blow it in my face. Oh, you can be sure I won't do that, sir. I don't like cigar smoke in my face I either. I don't either. It makes me kind of nauseous. Why don't you uh, take it out and put it out? All right. Let me put it out right in this ashtray here, and I'll listen to what the problem is, Mr. Marlowe. All right, uh, Mr. T Toledo, this gentleman here, this youngster, is Harry Backstage, Jr., are you familiar with the name Harry Backstage, Broadway actor? Yeah, I believe I've heard it. And Mary Backstage, his wife? I'm yeah. secretly in love with her, incidentally. Oh, yeah, sure, yeah. sir. I, I remember them both. I well, saw them in Westchester Furioso a few months ago. Did you like it? Oh, it was the worst thing I ever saw in my life, Did you ever see that TV show? No, I don't believe I... What time was it on? It was on, like, at 5.30 a.m. in the morning, New York. Time. Well, I kind of worked the other end of the day, sir. <laughs> And so Greg Marlowe prepares to outline his plan to locate Mary and Harry. Will Detective Toledo be able to help him? Be sure and join us tomorrow when we'll hear Greg say... $350 a day? That's tomorrow in the next exciting episode of Mary Backstage Noble Wife. Word Carr speaking. Blue here at uh, 59th Street. Uh, in uh, my last uh, broadcast a few minutes ago, I tried to call in my broadcasting partner, Artie Skirmahorn, who's positioned himself about 10 blocks north of here. I think difficulties have been overcome now, and so at 67th Street. Come in, please, Artie Skirmahorn. No uh, reason to be nervous at all. It's just a microphone, and uh, when I ask you a few questions, speak right up. Because, Come in, Artie. Uh, this is Wally uh, Baloo turning it Nothing to be afraid of. It's uh, just a little it's electrical device. It's people there. I don't be hearing think, you all over. Can you cut Artie off? I don't uh, think like he hears me. That, uh, giving him the cue. He's talking moments, to somebody uh, there at his vantage point. Uh, uh, when I get a signal to go on the air, he, then he I'll say, hear. hello, I'm Artie Skirmhorn. Then I'll point the microphone at you and ask you a few questions. Is that clear? Engineer, That's call perfect. Artie's engineer and tell him to put good. earphones on so he can hear me when I give him the cue. Will you please? So don't don't be uh, nervous. Uh, not a thing to be nervous about. Oh, he's got to send it back to the studio anyway. So, uh, we'll be reporting I'll in be getting a, go a little bit later. Months. You won't be getting any go-ahead right away, Artie, because you've ruined the whole time you had here. Back to the studio. Next, Mary Backstage, Noble Wife. The story of America's favorite family of the footlights and of their fight for security and happiness against the concrete heart of Broadway. While Mary, Harry, Calvin, and Pop are trying to discover the mystery of the derelict carousel they found in the dry Tortugas, Greg Marlowe has engaged Detective Al Toledo to track them down. As our story begins, Greg is wrapping up the details of the situation. And this is uh, Captain Wolf Larson. Uh, Mr. Toledo is one of the meanest... Uh seagoing people I've ever known or have ever heard of. Yeah, well, you painted a pretty clear picture of him, sir. I think I probably know who he is. He, uh, he has this uh, warped personality, you know. Every time he gets hit by a boom, uh, he either becomes nasty or very decent. It's, uh, it's a tough challenge for right, anybody it. to be... Uh, I get it. There's just one thing bothers me, sir. I hate to bring this up, but you mentioned that you were secretly in love with Mary Backstage. That's right. Oh, that secretary of mine, doesn't she know that I'm busy here in conference? Uh, what were you saying? Uh, uh, it, it just bothers me, sir, that... Uh, that you, you know, oh, boy, I mean, really. Uh, hold, hold it, hold it. Just certainly, one sir, anything. What do you want? 
Mr. Marlowe, when I buzz, why don't you have the common decency to push the button down and say, yes, Miss Thurgis? Is it that difficult to do? Well, uh, it's not that difficult to do, but didn't you know I was in conference? Didn't I tell you I didn't want to be disturbed that I'm talking with Mr. Toledo? I hate to bother you, sir, but... Well, what do you think secretary... I'm doing out here? Think I'm knitting or tatting or two or what? Doing a crossword puzzle? I'm out here working for you. Somebody wanted to see you, talked to you on the telephone, said it was very important, you big stiff. Does she always talk to you like that, Mr. Marlowe? Once in a while. All right, Miss Thurgis, thank you for calling. <coughs> Hang on. Well, I think I got the picture pretty clear. Uh, oh, and uh, well, I'm I'll get about... Uh, uh, she, uh, well, she gets cranky every once in a while. She's uh, very efficient. I though. understand, I don't know, uh, sir. I understand perfectly. Don't try to explain I it. I don't know how I could run my office without Miss Thurgis, although she has a short fuse. She seems very capable, sir. Yes. I did All right, well, it. that's it. Good luck to you I now. think I have the story. There's only one thing bothers me, sir, and that is my advance... You see, I get 300, 350 a day plus expenses. I hate to bring it up. I know it's a problem. Would you see Miss Thurgis on the way out? Meanwhile, in the dry Tortugas, Mary, Harry, Pop, and Calvin walk along the beach near the carousel. You know, I'm getting kind of sick of that music coming out of the carousel. Day in, day out, All day right. and night, no I'll relief. Say, I couldn't work at around a carnival or anything like that with that music all the time. Hey, hello. What? Look at this here in the sand. Ah, it looks like, like a picture. A picture of some kind. Look at that. Got something written on it. What does it say, Calvin? Oh, it says to our dear son. It's a picture of you, Harry. And you, Mary. Well, what can a picture of Mary and Harry be doing in the dry Tortugas? And will this be a clue to the adventures ahead? Be sure and join us tomorrow when we'll hear Mary say... It doesn't look like me, though. That's tomorrow in the next exciting episode of Mary Backstage, Noble Wife. Word Carr speaking. This is Artie Skarmahorn. I've just been given a go-ahead to go on the air and broadcast. I'm standing here at Fifth Avenue and the 45th Street now. And uh, let's swing down to pick up some of that music. I maybe shouldn't have said that. There was no band out there at the time. Uh, I had uh, lined up some people I wanted to talk with, uh, but the moment I got to go, I had to go on the air. They all kind of turned their back and left. So I'm, I'm more. No, they'll saying, tell me when they want me to go out, engineer. Uh, he said about ten alone, minutes of five would be uh, the time the they'd be playing it. So that close would be... to me of all. Huh? Uh, Shaking their head negatively, what indicating do you mean it's that uh, they do not want to go on the air. Both of us at once. As I look up Fifth Avenue now, I As can I see that you've Fifth got Avenue the now, I can see you some of the uh, colorful street. bands are marching up around All the corner. Here's one. Let's get out and pick up some of that music. Forty-eight, and then you have your fourth. What do you mean? What do you mean, the both? You can't have us both on now here. Now they're the just uh, marching along uh, to the beat no, of the drum. Yeah, he's on and anymore. And uh, people are in uh, of this pressing in toward the uh, corner here well, where I'm standing. Believe. It's rather a difficult uh, condition I find now? myself in. And, both uh, on now? I don't think I'll be able... What I have, is this? You can't... I have my earphones on. Artie, I can hear you talking there, and you weren't given the signal to go on the air. And uh, So let me wrap this thing up for now, and maybe we can straighten out the problem. Uh, the parade goes on, the Wally Blue returning it to the studio. Next, Mary Backstage, Noble Wife. The story of America's favorite family of the footlights and of their fight for security and happiness against the concrete heart of Broadway. As we left our friends yesterday, Calvin had just found a picture lying in the sand of the dry Tortugas. A picture which looked like Mary and Harry. Now, as Mary, Harry, and Pop look on, we hear Calvin exclaim, Why, it sure does look like you, though, don't you think? Well, let me see that a little bit closer, Calvin. Yes, uh, that is a picture of Mary. Look, Mary, that's, that's you and me. Taken so long ago, though. Yeah, that was one of your first fan pictures that you sent out years ago. You had hair then, Harry, and Mary, you were slim and trim. Yes, what do you we mean by that? Changed just a little bit, certainly. What do you mean by that, Pop? Uh, she was thin and trim. Well, I mean, she was thinner than she is now. She's added a few pounds in the past few years. 
Well, I've never. I don't think uh, there's any need I to uh, I mention think you that, Pop. Just as lovely today as the day you first stepped on the stage on Broadway, yes, Mary. Yes, I certainly think Thank so, you, too, Calvin. Mary. Thank you, You're very nice. Well, okay, uh, I'll go along with that. You've changed quite a bit, Pop. No need to go into it, of course. Of course, you've always been kind of, kind of on the oldish side, uh, Pop. Well, and, what do you mean by that? Well, uh, aside from that, you've always been, uh, you know, a little off-center, like you're not playing with a full deck. What do you mean, off-center? Now, wait a minute. There's well, no need no for need. us to be bickering here. Yeah, now, we're in a bad enough stew without this internal bickering. Of course he doesn't play with a full deck, but who cares? We're stuck here on dry Tortugas, and we have to just get off, that's all. Yeah, well, you've added a few pounds in the past few years. So what? Come on now, Lucky Mary. Lucky I have Bob. one now for strength, just to carry you. I'll probably have to carry you to the rescue boat. All right, oh, come all on right. now. Let's, let's, all, let's all get down. along. Just because he doesn't play with a full deck doesn't mean it's there. Well, you have put on a few pounds. You've got to admit it. Well, I have. All right, so let's not argue about it right. anymore. Soft as a grape. <laughs> let's go well, back. All right. Let me look at that picture again, just to make sure. The only one I know who had a copy of this was Harry Jr. Let me see... Say, this is where wait, we wait, signed wait, it wait, to wait. Him. Which, uh, which one is you, Harry, here? Right, right, right oh, there. On the then that's me here? Yes. So you are quite slim and trim, then. Oh, I have added a few pounds. Well, I picture. said, I said you'd add Oh, few... dry up, you quiet, crazy loot. Quiet, Pop. Well, come on now, folks. Here we are, stuck on an island. Why be fighting with one another? We should be pulling together as a team to get us off this thing and back to civilization. Well, I think the first thing we should do is try to solve the mystery of that carousel. It's still going around. There's still nobody around it. Let's see, Harry. Boy, oh boy, oh boy. What, what do you mean? Uh, well, I mean you. Uh, I don't know how you could become an idol of Broadway. How long ago was this picture taken? Oh, I think probably 20, 22 years ago. Uh-huh. Boy, oh boy. It's like a can of bait. Well, that's Mary you're looking at. Oh. And so our friends take a few minutes out to examine the picture found on the beach in the dry Tortugas. You want to join us tomorrow when we'll hear Calvin say, Well, that's no full deck I'm playing with either. That's tomorrow in the next exciting episode of Mary Backstage Noble Wife. Word Carr speaking. Backstage, Noble Wife, the story of America's favorite family of the footlights and of their fight for security and happiness against the concrete heart of Broadway. On Friday, Calvin announced that he had a theory about the mysterious carousel of the dry tortugas. And it's a few seconds later now as Mary, Harry, and Pop listen to Calvin's explanation. And we hear... Well, as near as I can figure out, uh, see, see, now it started up. The cloud is gone. Now, wait. How wait, do you... Let me explain it to you. Yes, how do you connect the clouds with the carousel, Calvin? Well, I... I you see this mirror here? Yes. Oh, yes. That's I see that. a pretty good size one, too, What's that it? have to do with it? Well, you see, the sun rays hit the mirror. And then the re mirror reflects these rays. It hits this, I don't know what you call this thing, and it makes this belt go oh, around. Oh, maybe kind of an electric eye type of operation. Something like that. Solar energy, you mean that's what's running this carousel? I have a hide. the sun is doing it. Because, see, you know, right. the cloud just There's came a over. The cloud just went by the sun and the carousel stopped. I didn't know you had such a scientific mind. Were you a science major in college, Calvin? No, sir, I didn't get to college. Oh, you didn't? No, sir. Always thought you had. High school, I was always good in geography. Hey, let me try something. I'm going to put my hand between the mirror and the electric eye. Well, be see careful. Don't, don't hurt yourself. See? Look. Oh, no, that won't hurt. It stops it, see? I cut out the sun from the mirror. Well, that is amazing. I just can't believe it. Well, I'm glad we've solved the problem anyway. Who do you suppose ever rigged this up? I had no idea how this uh, carousel got way down here. I'm really at sea. I don't mean that 
literally. I mean, we're out at sea, of course, yes. because we're on an island. Yes, we're when 68 I say, miles west of Key West. We know what you mean when you say you're at sea. We understand you mean you're at loggerheads. No. No, that's another key. This no, is at loggerheads. A, loggerhead key is further back. Well, plus, when you're at loggerheads, you're, you're disagreeing with somebody. You're not at sea. No, I understand that perfectly. I'm a little confused. Well, look, this isn't helping us to get off the island. That's what we started to, to do, is to try and find water and... Maybe some food that will keep us until we can be saved. Well, if you want to look over this way, see clear out to the horizon there. But You see that sail? You know what that means? It means there must be a boat under it, huh? That means there's a boat, and I think it's coming this way. It looks as if it is. If the wind keeps up, maybe we've uh, got a chance to be saved by that. Boy, did you hear what I just heard? Yeah, it's all gray now. Oh, yes. This There's no, uh... Gonna be a good storm, I'm afraid. No rays getting through this cloud. Well, we'd better try and find cover someplace. Well, at least under the carousel should be safe. It's got a kind of a rickety roof. Say, keep too much look, look water. Look at that boat coming. Is that the Rita B again, you suppose? Let me see. No, I don't think so, Mary. No, that has a different uh, configuration of sails. Different what? Configuration of sales. Well, is Mary right in thinking that may be the Rita B returning with Captain Wolf Larson? Or is it another ship, one that will take them from the dry Tortugas? Be sure and join us tomorrow when we'll hear Mary say, It is the Rita B. That's tomorrow in the next exciting episode of Mary Backstage Noble Wife. Word Carr speaking. first guest was the subject of a United Press feature some months ago, and you're Mr. Hubert Wedlow of Harrisburg, Illinois. Is that right, sir? Yes, that's correct. I became involved in one of those humorous foul-ups that computers are always making. <laughs> yeah. And, of course, the newspapers love to print feature items about that subject. Mm -hmm. I understand I got almost two full inches of space in more than 400 papers uh, from coast to coast. That's more publicity than most of us achieve in a lifetime, Mr. Yes. Wedlow. I understand the computer mistake in your case was made on your weekly paycheck. Yes, I work for the gas company mm. back home, and I'm supposed to make $162 a week. Right. But then uh, one week, the machine went haywire and issued me a check for $10,162. Of course, I knew right away it was a mistake. Sure. And I couldn't keep the money. But I uh, showed the check to the local newspaper before I gave it back. And, uh, well, the editor made quite a fascinating item out of it. Yeah, well, I'm <laughs> sure a lot of our listeners saw that original item, but then we never heard how the story came out. Were you rewarded for promoted for your honesty in giving back that $10 million check? No, I was fired the next week. Uh -huh. You see, the boss's wife is in charge of the payroll department. Uh, and the boss thought I should have come to him quietly instead of pointing out coast to coast how his missus was a dimwit mm -hmm. for not catching a mistake like that. Well, it's obvious from your shabby appearance you haven't been able to find another job, but we do thank you for coming clear to New York to tell us the sad conclusion of your story, sir. Sure. <laughs> Mary Backstage, Noble Wife. The story of America's favorite family of the footlights and of their fight for security and happiness against the concrete heart of Broadway. Yesterday, as a storm approached the dry Tortugas, Mary, Harry, Pop, and Calvin sighted what looked like the Rita B, Captain Larson's pirate ship heading into shore. Now, a short time later, the vessel nears the decaying wharf, as we hear... Oh, well, look at here. Wouldn't you know, just as we're getting hungry and tired, knee water, the Rita V would show up. You know, I never thought I'd look forward to seeing this vessel again and its motley crew, but I must say it, it does express a ray of hope for us. It's hard to believe that we'd ever think it would be pleasure to see that Wolf Larson again. I know. Really is. Of course, maybe he's had another change of heart. Maybe his attitude is altogether different now. Maybe that's why he came back. But at any event, you never know. It's always temporary. One of those personalities never lasts more than a day or two, and then he's the other person again. That's yes, he's certainly right so there. so terrible. Look, look how it's easing up to the wharf here, the old decaying wharf. You're doing a good job bringing her in, Captain. Ahoy aboard the Rita B. Beautiful job. Yes, sir. Ahoy, Captain Larson. It's us, Harry, Mary, Wait, Calvin, and me. Wait. What's the matter, Mary? Well, I don't... I don't see any sign of life on that ship. Do you? 
Not yet, no, but I guess they just haven't realized that they've landed. I don't see anybody back there, up front. And look. Up in the mast. See the wheel up there in the bow? It's lashed down. What do you mean by that? Tied with that, uh, with that rope, that line. Oh. So that it'll follow a course all by itself. The huh. sails have been reefed, too. What do you mean by that? It means that they've been rolled up on the, on the spars there. Uh-huh. Well, why would they have the sails reefed if they're on a course to some place? That's a good question, Calvin. Ahoy, Captain Larson. Ahoy, anybody up on that boat? Boy, that storm is getting closer and closer, too, isn't it? Drop a yeah, gag plank. Like Drop a gag plank, please. Nobody's paying any attention. Say, look, there's a rope ladder hanging over the side. Let's go up that. I, uh, I don't think you should go, Mary. No, no, no I don't I either. I don't think I could go up and... I don't think I will either, uh... Rope ladder. Oh, it's one way to get... I tell you what, let me go aboard and I'll speak to the captain and get an idea... Just what frame of mind he's in, you know, just why he's here. Harry, just a minute. Now, you know Captain Wolf Larson. Do you think that uh, he would tolerate you boarding his ship over the side up a Jacob's Ladder this way? Well, there's only one way to find out, Calvin. Here I go. Hmm? Here he goes. How high do you suppose that ladder is up to the... To well, the that has to be a good uh, 35, 40 feet up there. Be careful, Harry. you got to... Oh! Oh! oh. Oh, boy. Throw George. me a line. Throw me a line. We George. don't have anything. We don't have any line. Oh, my God. Well, it's only knee deep. Oh, right. Out. Right. I'll just walk out. Sure. Go up again. And so, just as Harry reaches the rail of the Rita B, he falls backward into the water. Be sure and join us tomorrow when they'll discover whether there's anyone aboard the vessel, and we'll hear Calvin say... No, this is a derelict. That's tomorrow in the next exciting episode of Mary Backstage Noble Wife. Word Carr speaking. Well, let's see. Another feature story follow-up is here in the person of Mrs. Clara Shumbaugh of Moberly, Missouri. I understand the Associated Press ran a picture as well as a feature story about you, Ms. Shumbaugh. Yes, they had a photographer right on the scene at the Missouri State Fair when I won a blue ribbon for my giant cucumber. It was almost two feet long, and it weighed more than 19 and a half pounds. I remember seeing the picture in the paper. The cucumber really was enormous. But uh, I'm wondering what happened after the original story appeared. Did you sign contracts to display the giant cucumber at other fairs? Or no. What? In fact, the newspapers had barely hit the streets when we cut the thing open and found it wasn't a cucumber. It was a watermelon with bumps on the outside. I can't imagine how it got mixed in with my cucumber display. And, well, I felt awfully silly about the whole thing. Well, I can see how you would. But you're a good sport to come here and tell us about it anyway. <laughs> Mary Backstage, Noble Wife. The story of America's favorite family of the footlights and of their fight for security and happiness against the concrete heart of Broadway. Our story continues today as we join Detective Al Toledo and Greg Marlowe, who has hired him to find Mary, Harry, Pop, and Calvin. And outside the House of Toast, their fast food restaurant in Skunk Haven, we hear Greg say... I imagine this is probably the last place they were seen, uh... Unless it was at home, of course. Right, sir. That's why I wanted to come back here to question the uh, fellow who's uh, running the house of toast now. Neil, is that his name? I have no idea. I don't know who's running the house Well, of let's toast. go on inside, sir, and we'll see who we can find. Sam. Hi, everybody. Wow. Welcome to the house of toast. You name it, we have it. We want to do it our way, your way, everybody's way. Tell me this, Mr. Marlowe. Is that Neil? That's Neil, Kid was given the big sales field. Kid, I mentioned met in your office with Harry Backstage yeah, Jr. Yeah, that's right, sure. How do you do, Neil? Hi, how do you want it? On the far side or on the near side? Say, you're quite a go-getter. You look like you got a good business going here for uh, you. Oh, we really have, and we try to please. We uh, we have wonderful toast, uh, and it's buttered just right. If you want extra toast, you can have it for an extra quarter. I understand. We're very nifty like that. I understand, but what's bothering me is, what do you know about the backstage's disappearance from the house of toast here? Well, you think that's bad. I don't even know where Harry Jr. is. You know, he was with me there for a little while. Yeah, that's when I met you in Mr. Marlowe's office. That's right. 
Oh, now I play. You two look so familiar when you came in. I thought you were a couple of profs I had at school. No, I'm a private detective, and this is Mr. Marlowe, who's secretly in love with Mary Baxter. How do you do? Oh, hi. Yeah, sure. Oh, now I know where I'd seen you two before. Yeah, sure. Come on back in my office here. The one thing that bothers me, Neil, is were you here the night the backstages left, the last time they were seen? Uh, well, I don't know exactly, you know, the last time they were seen, uh, Mr. Toledo. I'm uh, completely at sea on that. I don't know. At you know? sea? Wait just a minute. That bothers me. At sea? Yeah. I think I got a clue, Mr. Marlowe. What do you mean? Is there a dock, a report here in Skunk Haven where boats could come in and go out? Oh, yes, there is. Uh... Take me to it right away. <laughs> And at the same moment, in the dry Tortugas, Mary, Pop, and Calvin watch as Harry climbs over the deck of the Rita B. Be careful now. Don't fall again, Harry. Certainly is deserted up here. Nobody in sight. Maybe he's below deck, sleeping or something. Well, I'm going to lower the gangplank so you folks can come aboard. Be I'll... very careful now. Step back, Mary. Yes, watch it, Mary. Hurt. Don't let the gangplank fall on you. <laughs> What's so funny about that? I don't know. It seemed funny at the time. Well, it's not too funny to have a gangplank fly All right. Is the gangplank uh, lowered? Yes, it is, Harry. Then come aboard. All right. Walk this way, please. Wow. A deserted derelict. And so our friends all aboard Captain Larson's Rita B. to find no one of the crew or the captain aboard. You ought to be here tomorrow when we'll hear Calvin say, Hey, look, right there. That's tomorrow in the next exciting episode of Mary Backstage Noble Wife. Word Carr speaking. And now with today's last feature story follow-up, here is Mr. Herbert Botchford of Cleveland, Ohio. Mr. Botchford, I understand the item about you appeared in almost 900 newspapers. Yes, it was in the Cleveland Plain Dealer originally, but then it was picked up by one of the national news services. And I heard later it was also carried throughout the British Commonwealth by Reuters. That's an amazing coverage. What was your story that attracted so much attention? Well, I went out to my mailbox one day last April, and I thought it was kind of funny that one of the letters had real old Christmas seals on it. But then I also noticed that there was just a two-cent stamp on the front. So I examined the postmark very carefully. Yes, I know you did. To make a long story short. Well, I don't usually make it short when I'm telling it. I know, but we're running out of time. What it all boils down to is you received a letter that had taken 47 years to be delivered, even though it was mailed right in the same city. That's right. It was mailed in 1928. The post office people can't figure what happened to it all those years, but it finally turned up. And got delivered. Well, it's a mystery may never be solved, but one thing you could clear up for us, sir, the news story didn't mention who that long-lost letter was from. It was from the Internal Revenue Service, telling me that I owed another ten bucks on my 1927 income tax. Well, I'm sure that small debt was canceled after you explained what happened. No. You see, figuring compound interest for all those years, I now owe $9,433.67, and I can't pay it. So I'll be starting my prison term next week. Well, then I'm glad we caught up with you while you're still available. I want to thank you and all of the other guests for stopping by today so we could learn how your feature stories came out. Next, Mary Backstage, Noble Wife. The story of America's favorite family of the footlights and of their fight for security and happiness against the concrete heart of Broadway. Mary, Harry, Pop, and Calvin have boarded the Rita B, and right now are trying to ascertain whether Captain Larson and the rest of his pirate crew are aboard. And as they approach the wheelhouse, we hear... You know, this is almost like a story I read once when I was a small child about a bold derelict ship at sea, you know, just a sh- gray shadow, and then somebody climbed aboard, and there was nobody on there, uh-huh. and just... There's no sign of anything. Uh-huh. It's really scary. A little yeah. bit like uh, Robinson Crusoe, isn't it, or... Or one of those things where the boat was empty and he kept swimming out to get the get the supplies off? I don't know, but there's always been something very, I don't know, spooky about a, a ship with nobody on it floating on the ocean. Well, of course, it has great dramatic possibilities, Calvin. Oh, indeed, it has whatever that would mean. You mean like, uh... <laughs> Bells work? Yeah. 
Let's mean go into the it would have dramatic yeah. possibility. What do you mean by that? Like you could set a story here? Yes, of course, of course. Uh -huh. Fine. Very mysterious. Let's go into the to the wheelhouse here and see if there's any any sign of. But you know what's curious? <coughs> Nobody, Nobody in, here. in here. It is curious though. Where would they all be? He had a big crew on this. Ship. Maybe they abandoned ship for one reason or another that we don't know about. And yet there's no sign of damage here, no, no windstorm or water damage. It looks just like he'd just left to go below deck somewhere. Hey, look, here's uh, here's the log of the Rita B. I'm going to sit Let's down. Let's see what the last entry is. Captain Larson's desk and put my feet up on it. Uh, uh oh. I think I'll find uh, see if I can find some of his port. Would sure. you like a little bit of the captain's port? I'd like uh, about two inches of it and a nice tumbler. Sure. Yes, I would. <laughs> so how about you, Mary? Oh no, thank you. You know, I'll bet he'd love to see us here now. Me sitting in his chair, with my feet up on his desk, with one of his cigars in my mouth, sipping on his port with uh, wine. I'll bet he'd just love to see us. Well, I don't know about that. If he were in a bad frame of mind, I think that would make him quite angry. I don't think he would appreciate your sitting there in his uh, chair with his, your feet up on his desk at all. Well, Calvin. he's nowhere around, Mary. Obviously, the ship is deserted. Why, uh, why not make well, ourselves comfortable? there's something about Captain Wolf Larson that his presence is always around his boat. I just can't imagine this Rita B Look without at this. him. Look at this last page of the log. It's entered on Sunday, and it says 68 degrees south, 44 degrees west of the Dry Tortugas. Abandoned ship at 4.30 in the afternoon. Oh, let me write those uh, figures down. What degrees were those? 68 degrees south. Yeah. 44 degrees west. 44 degrees west. Hey. Where, would that, uh, where would that put him, uh, Calvin, when they abandoned? Can you figure that out? Well, uh, what would that be centigrade? And so our friends find the log of the Rita B and learn that it had indeed been abandoned by the captain and his crew. And maybe we'll learn more of the story tomorrow when we'll hear Calvin say, Okay, up anchor. That's tomorrow in the next exciting episode of Mary Backstage Noble Wife. Word Carr speaking. We have an unusual guest here to kick things off today. She's Mrs. Constance Metzger of Madrid, Montana. And what makes Mrs. Metzger unusual is that she looks exactly like Betty Davis of movie fame. Welcome, Mrs. Metzger. What brings you to New York? Well, I'm here to pick up my prize from the recent Bob and Ray Bake Off contest. Oh, yeah. I won with my lemon bias layer cake. Tell us about the uh, prizes you won, will you? Well, I won this hand tool leather spatula mm -hmm. with a removable top and a container for shortening. It hardly seems much of a... Then uh, there's an inside flap for postage stamps. Uh-huh. And a pie mix compartment in the handle, adjacent to another compartment, which uh, has Sega's ointment for fat spatter burns in it. Boy, that sounds like an unusual and useful gift, too. And they huh? also received a sword cane. Okay, Mrs. Metzger, now uh, I want you to tell us what you said to our Bob and Ray scout. We invited you to uh, be here today because of your startling resemblance to Miss Betty Davis. Well, until I knew what it was all about... I pointed my sword at him. Hope uh, the scout didn't strike you, Mrs. Metzger. No, no, there wasn't an altercation at all. How long have you known that uh, you looked like Betty Davis of the silver screen? Well, ever since I saw of human bondage some years ago, mm -hmm. that Miss Davis played the part of a mean waitress in that one. What she did to that poor man. And this movie you saw it was in Madrid, Montana, was it? Well, it was at a drive-in theater, closer to Merge, Montana, I'd say. And I guess it was soon after that that uh, folks began to call you Betty, huh? That's right. And when you went to Madrid, Montana, or Merge, for that matter, there's a sign hung across the street that says, You're now entering Madrid, Montana, home of Mrs. Constance, quote, Betty Davis, unquote, Metzger. The sign is even bigger than the radar trap sign that blocks the street in Madrid. Did the fact that uh, you look like Betty Davis make you more popular back there in Madrid or merge? With well, other... I dressed differently. I wore a lot of feather boas because I looked like Miss Betty Davis. Mm -hmm. Mercy how those feather boas used to give my suitors fits when they inhaled over <laughs> my shoulder. Well, now, when you went to uh, accept your prize, did our Bob and Ray Bake Off officials notice the close resemblance? Yes, and after I received my spatula and sword cane... I favor the folks at the auditorium with my prepared imitation. Hey, could we hear your act, uh, Mrs. Metzger? Well, I do the regular Betty Davis imitation one here so often. The audience at the auditorium like it? Oh, goodness, yes. Do you really want to hear it? Yeah, yeah. It's an excerpt from a motion picture, The Letter. All right. <clears throat> here is Mrs. Constance Metzger, look-alike, 
of Betty Davis. All right. <clears throat> Philip? Philip? Give me that letter, Philip. Do you hear? Give me that letter. Why, that is remarkable, Mrs. Metzger. And all the more remarkable because I look like her. And our thanks uh, to you for appearing on our Bob and Ray show today, Mrs. Constance Metzger. You certainly could be Betty Davis's twin. Don't I know it? Next, Mary Backstage, Noble Wife. The story of America's favorite family of the footlights and of their fight for security and happiness against the concrete heart of Broadway. Aboard the deserted Rita B, Mary, Harry, Pop, and Calvin have decided to try their chance at sailing back to the mainland from the dry Tortugas. And in the bridge house, they're just finishing some of the captain's port, as we hear. Hey, that's not too bad. I think, though, that we should make plans to set to sea. Yes, Looking I at do, the too. chart here, you know, look, uh -huh. Key West isn't too far, it's just about from... The tip of my thumb to the yes, first knuckle. That's, that's right. not too far that's away. That's about 65, 68 miles, the way I'd figure it, of this chart. Oh. Your thumb is about 68 miles, oh, right? Oh, I see. Yeah, right. Yeah, it's I guess about that... 65 miles from here. Now we should be able to sail this in that direction. We've got a compass. We know I'm which direction I'm going to look for some is. food. I'll be back in a little while. Yes, good idea, Mary. Hey, that's a good idea. See I'm getting a little hungry. They left any... the spot, though. <laughs> see if they left any food aboard. Wonder how long it would take us to sail say, back uh, to Key West. I don't say, Pop. Huh? You're an old radio ham, aren't you? Yeah. Didn't they used to call you Sparks years ago? No, Pop. Beloved stage doorman. Oh, but I mean when you used to play around with radio in short wave. They right? still call me Pop, then. Oh, they didn't call you Sparks? No. Well, I'll be. I had a friend that they call Sparks. Yeah. Well, let's uh, see if we can make contact with the Coast Guard or... Uh, All right, let me sit down and put these earphones on my head. And I think I'd get a little more port. Those don't fit too well with that point on your head, do they, Pop? <laughs> How about you, uh, no, they Harry? Don't. You want some more port? Sure, I'll have some more. Right. It's going to be a, a happy trip back. In the meantime, we've got to unfurl the sails and, and pull them up if we're going to sail out of here. Why don't we try to establish radio contact first, though? Because which one of us is going to be captain? Me? Well, I think I should be. I'm a famous Broadway star. Well, it's not so much what you are. It's who knows how to sail a boat. Well, do you know? Well, I think I know as much about it as you, if not more. I mean, I used to have boats when I was a boy. Of course, they were just rowboats. Well, all right, you can be captain if you want. You it's a grave responsibility, though, anything, you know. Just as long as you give me the respect I deserve. Wait a minute, I think I'm getting something on the radio here. That's a pretty good rig that uh, Captain Larson had. Can't get anything yet. <laughs> Keep going, you'll find something. There it is. No. What's that? Wait, I think I got something. Let me go back. So, let's catch Biggest problem. Well. Who knows how to get an anchor up? Well, we just pull it up over the side. Oh, I guess. no, that's a pretty heavy anchor that's there. That's a pretty dumb question for the captain of this ship to be asking. Who knows how to get an anchor up? Well, don't be talking that way. You better keep a civil tongue in your head when uh, you're talking to the captain. Wait of this just boat. a minute. You're beginning to sound like Captain Larson. Oh, I don't want to do that. All right, well, let's go aft and get the anchor up, and then we can set the sea. It's in the bow. I beg your pardon. <laughs> And so, Calvin, Harry, and Pop, and Mary begin preparations for sailing the Rita B back to Key West. You ought to be here on Monday when we'll hear Mary say, No, there's not a bit of food here. That's Monday in the next exciting episode of Mary Backstage, Noble Wife. Word Car speaking.